Hey there guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, today, we're gonna talk about sending email through the WinLink Global Email System. And uh, this is gonna be a little bit different than all of the WinLink videos that are out on the internet because I can only share with you my experience in using WinLink for the last few weeks. Uh, it's not intended for me to show you how to set it up on your system. Uh, there are lots of great videos and I just can't do it justice. So I'll link those down below of the resources I found personally useful in getting WinLink up and running. Before we do that, let's talk about the reason why I went with WinLink to kind of round out my emergency communications plan. Uh, first of all, it is a technology that is largely infrastructure free in so far as I'm concerned because I can actually have a full power outage, uh, internet outage, uh, cell phone outage, and I still have the ability to send an email and receive email from my home station using my HF radio to another station. Um, and that station will take care of uh, doing the right things to uh, send it off to its final destination and then also for me to be able to receive. Uh, email. And the one nice thing about it is that while the WinLink email system works great for ham radio operators um, within that little network, it actually allows me to communicate with anybody that has a valid email address. So really great for interoperability between hams and non-hams. Now, we do have power outages pretty frequently. In fact, we had one last week. We had some high winds that took out the power and then took out the um, the tower that uh, provides our microwave uh, internet access. And at that point, uh, since we don't have cell coverage either, uh, the only way for me to communicate digitally with people like my boss that under a different state is through email. And typically what I would do is hop the car, do a 30 minute drive into town and uh, tether on to um, either 4G or squat out of Starbucks to get internet access so I could send an email saying, hey, uh, we're, we're offline at the moment. So that's no longer the case. And uh, that's what I wanna talk about today. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that WinLink is, like any digital mode requires patience setting up for the first time. And there are lots of different radio combinations. There are lots of different equipment that's required, like a sound card interface. Uh, there's software for both Windows and Linux and the Raspberry Pi. And all of that takes quite a bit of time to get going. Uh, I finally have everything working. Uh, the station that I'm using right now is my Yaesu FT891. That's my 100 watt radio. Uh, but for WinLink, I actually don't typically run it more than 25 watts. In fact, I'm able to exchange uh, email uh, with only 5 watts on that rig. Um, I do need an audio interface, and for that I'm using the SignalLink USB sound interface. And it works pretty well. It's what I use for FTA and JS8 call, so I didn't have to purchase anything new. In terms of hardware, I'm using a Raspberry Pi. And I'll link you below down to Jason KM4 ACK's channel. Uh, he was the one that um, I really referenced when setting up the Raspberry Pi side of things. And the two pieces of software that I'm using are um, Pat Winlink and then the RDOP modem. Now there are other modes. There's a newer mode code called Vara HF. Uh, it's more efficient. I'll be doing a video on that later, but uh, right now I don't have the ability to run that since Currently, it's only Windows only. So there's a whole lot of setup there. So if you guys are interested in um, sending messages, just take your time. Now, outside of that, uh, in order to give myself the best success when an emergency happens, I've decided I want to test myself uh, daily, and if I can't do daily, weekly. And the one resource I want to suggest to anybody who wants to get into this is finding a WinLink net. And I'm using one called WinLink Wednesday. And the goal of that net is to check in. There's a whole series of protocols that you need to observe, uh, who to send it to, what to include in your subject line, what to include in the body and how to format it. In fact, I'm going to show you 
uh, this morning's successful WinLink uh, check-in for WinLink Wednesday. And it's just a really great way to hone in on this skill and practice at least once a week. In fact, I'm having pretty good luck checking almost every morning. And um, outside of the, uh, the radio, the Raspberry Pi, the software, I'm also using that uh, really simple uh, Nivis 40 meter dipole I built on the channel. And I'm able to get into RMS stations that are really geographically close. Uh, the ones I'm able to get into lately are uh, mostly in um, Southern California and in parts of Utah with uh, no trouble at all running five watts. Some general observations I've noticed. So when I first got into WinLink, I had a hard time, uh, for whatever reason, uh, having a successful message go through on 20 meters. And I have a really nice antenna. That one is deployed at the proper height. And I just have not had any luck. For some reason, when I switched to 40 meters, that's when everything changed for me. So I think selecting your bands uh, is probably something to consider uh, first and see which ones work best for you. Uh, second, by trying to check into uh, the WinLink email system uh, every morning, at least to send and receive my email, uh, I found it very helpful to use FT8 and Jason KM4 ACK talks about this because it gives you an idea when you look at PSK Reporter what your propagation looks like, which stations can hear you, and uh, it really does help identify which RMS stations are in that same geographic area that you're currently uh, propagating into. And uh, after some time, I did not need to use that so much. I pretty much found like the three or four stations that I get into uh, pretty regularly at the same time of day on the same band with, with no problem. The um, other thing I found with these daily uh, or near daily exercises is that I also captured, uh, in addition to the stations that I had good success, uh, I captured uh, the amount of uh, power I was consuming so that in an emergency I could actually see how much uh, power I need to send and receive a email for a given session. And in my local testing with my radio, uh, I actually need about uh, 500 milliamps to do a full 10 minutes uh, send receive cycle. And on average, I'm sending about one email out and receiving anywhere from zero to, to three emails. So I'll, I'll throw up the, uh, the spreadsheet of kind of what I'm doing to uh, historically track this success over time. Um, one big lesson learned, and I had a few hams out there call me out, so thank you guys for uh, pointing me in the right direction. Uh, sending email over radio is very, very slow. It's very similar to the early pre-internet days of using dial-up. In fact, uh, the RDOP connection I'm using is essentially a modem, and you need to be able to concisely craft your messages so they're as small as possible. I would say on the order of no more than a few sentences, if not less. And uh, I've really learned to hone in on my communication ability to have very precise, concise language. Um, one thing you don't want to do in typical email fashion is when you're when you respond to somebody, you don't want to include that previous thread of conversation because all of that is unnecessary data that needs to be sent across over the airwaves and ties up that station. And it also increases the amount of time for the transmission and wears down your batteries and all of that precious um, precious resources that you would otherwise just want to save in a real emergency. Uh, let me see what else I have on my list. Well guys, those are some of the high levels. Uh, this won't be the last video on the WinLink, but I just want to share with you uh, that trying to get over some of the hurdles in some of the areas in amateur radio are absolutely worth uh, the payoff at the end. Uh, invest in trying to figure out how to get your station up and running with these digital modes. Um, they are complex, they are a little bit brittle. Um, in fact, I did fail to mention one thing. Uh, last week we had a power outage and it lasted for about 90 minutes, but I had no idea at the time. So I ran out my solar panels, uh, ran the uh, shack on battery power, used backup lights, and uh, it took me a few attempts to send out 
uh, an email message to test that. But after two or three attempts, I finally was able to have a successful uh, connection and the email was able to be sent off. So keep in mind that you may not be able to send the email when you want. Uh, the worst case scenario is one time I think I went a full six hours and I had tried about maybe twice every hour over that six hour period and was never able to send or receive or connect to a node uh, in general. So it does take some practice and like again, it, and like I said, it won't always be there when you need it. But if it happens to be available and the conditions are right and it's working for you, it's a great way to uh, stay in contact during an emergency. All right, guys, so let's jump into the quick uh, WinLink Wednesday uh, check-in. I'll show you a little bit of how that protocol works, and then I'll catch you next time. I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. All right, so I'm connected to Pat WinLink via a web browser using my laptop, but this could just as easily be my smartphone or tablet. The first thing I want to do is click on Action, then Connect, and I want to select the transport. In our case, we're using RDOP, but there are other modes available. Next, we want to find an RMS gateway in our area and filter by the appropriate band. Since I'm running a 40 meter dipole, I'm going to go ahead and select 40 meters. On the left there, we have a list of all the stations filtered by that criteria, listed by closest station to my location. And I'm going to go ahead and select this one. It seems to be one that has worked well for me in the last few weeks. And then I'm going to go ahead and manually tune my antenna to this frequency since I do not have rig control configured as of yet. It does work and I have tried it on another radio. Alright, so the next step here is we should be connecting to a remote RMS gateway and it looks like that is successful. And this process does take a little bit of time if it doesn't altogether fail, which does happen from time to time. And I have sped up this recording because it does take about 10 minutes for my typical sessions to go through. And as you can see here, we are connected to a node out in California, which is pretty much geographically um, in, in my local-ish area with my Nevis antenna deployment. And uh, it should be attempting to receive uh, the emails uh, that I have yet to fetch. And I'm actually expecting an email from the WinLink Wednesday coordinators uh, to make sure that um, everybody has the correct uh, protocol for today's check-in. So we're going to give it another uh, 30 seconds and I'm hoping that we'll be able to see the reminder. And there we go, there is the reminder email and uh, it'll also go through and uh, list any other emails that we have as you can see there on screen. Now we're going to go ahead and skip to a really quick uh, sped up version of the actual download in progress. All right, so as you can see here, we are fetching one of two emails, and uh, the first one is already completed, although it did take a few minutes, and this is the WinLink net reminder uh, with the uh, check-in instructions for this week, and they're a little bit different this week, so it's always good to take a look at uh, the instructions from a net control. Next, we're going to go ahead and compose a message for our check-in, and what I like to do is copy and paste directly out of the reminder email and open a second window and go to compose, and essentially just copy and paste the pieces for the subject line, who I need to send it to, and the body. So we're going to send it to the net control operator just by putting this call sign in the to field. Then we're going to cut and paste his subject into the subject line. And then the last piece we're going to do is copy the one line body text. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab his example. And then we'll make some modifications for my specific check-in. And I know there are templates out there, but for right now this is working pretty well for me. So right now I'm just substituting my call sign, my name, my city and then we'll go ahead and provide the county that I'm in, state, and the mode and I'm using HF and we'll go ahead and post that and it'll place it in my outbox. 
Uh, when Wing Link is ready, you'll see that there's a message ready to be sent, and we'll go ahead and transmit it through that same RMS gateway.